Welcome to the Thursday, November 5th, 2015 regular meeting of the Hopkinton School Committee. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So tonight, um, Dr. McLeod is, is at bronchitis, well, suffering from loss of voice, and so <laughs> we will, we're going to have a really short meeting. Oh. We're all going to move really fast because she's not going to talk, and uh, if we have questions, we'll go to Mr. Burlow. Um, so we'll start with recognitions. We'll move into the first public comments, then we'll have our reports, followed by new business, where we'll be talking about naloxone, the... Hopkinton High School, Hopkins School Roof Replacement Project, some capital budget recommendations, a joint capital project with the town, uh, capital project school department article warrant, and then we don't have any old business, we'll move into items by consensus, and then we will adjourn. Um, so first, do we, I don't know if we have any recognitions. We do not tonight. Okay, but this might be a good time to I know there's an ESBC report, but sort of talk about the success of the ESBC. Okay, we'll do it in recognitions. You guys should you should recognize some some people. So uh, certainly, first and foremost, I want to it. thank the 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 town, um, everyone who came out to the town meeting. Uh, we were fortunate to receive overwhelming support um, to approve the elementary school project um, last not this past Monday, but the Monday before that. Um, so again, the, the school passed, the proposal passed overwhelmingly. So obviously I'd like to thank all those who voted for it. Also want to give special recognition to um, all the members of the elementary school building committee, but in particular, um, Rob Nickerson, who did all of the, really led all of the communications effort around um, the school project with respect to social media, um, and really all levels of communication. And then also to Joe Markey and Mike Shepard and Dr. McLeod, who did such a wonderful job in presenting um, to uh, presenting the school to town meeting. And then finally also the, the citizens who, who got together to appoint the, um, the committee to support the school. Um, but Amy Fazzo and Burton Shaw had done something in the head of Trump for getting other people uh, in particular to help organize the signs and build awareness of the school. Um, we're not done yet. Uh, we still need to have the school pass at the ballot on this coming Monday, November 9th, right here in the middle school gym. A polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, we do need a simple majority to, to pass the school project. Um, and so again, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. this coming Monday, November 9th, here in the middle school. Then. Great. Does anyone else have recognitions? Could anyone? I just add to yep. that because it's it's pertinent to the voting. Uh, we have the access ramp on the back of the Brown Gym, and that's where. Beliefs. Okay. Um, we don't have anyone here for public comment. Um, we would start with the student council report, but he's not here. Um, if he comes later, we'll invite him up. ESBC, we just did it, right? So, yeah, the only thing I'll add is we have a, an element of the building committee meeting on November 12th, um, where students are hoping to do as well on Monday. We'll talk about the next steps that we have. Are you sure? Okay. Um, do we have any liaison reports? No. <laughs> Done. Um, with respect to the school committee chair report, I will first report on we all got a communication from a parent of a middle school student about the eighth grade field trip. She, we were CC'd and it went to um, the principal and Dr. McLeod and how communications like that will be handled is they will, the principal will be the person responding because that's the level, that's the first level of a communication like that. And so we've not responded. I don't know if anyone on the committee has heard anything else, but I think with respect to the eighth grade field trip, the first person to go to is Mr. Keller. 
Um, and I did see he, he wrote a thoughtful response, and I think hopefully we'll see where it goes from there. Um, the other thing I'll report on is that Gene and I were able to go to the Board of Selectmen meeting on Tuesday, November 3rd. Uh, the, I'm going to find the agenda items that we went for that related to the school committee was the FY17 revenue projections and the FY17 budget policy statement. Um, I think to the extent much happened there, I'll, I'll go backwards, the message seemed to be that, you know, they wanted everyone to, uh, they wanted to see if we could have level funding. There was an explanation by the town manager that that might mean not level service. We might go down in service. That might not be a possibility this year. Um, there was talk about the fact that it was a negotiation year. And really, there was no, the, the budget message or statement has not been finalized, but it seems that the Board of Selectmen are looking for um, everyone to, you know, pair back and look at where asking for money and, and trying to focus on the needs as opposed to wants. Um, with respect to the the pers I'm trying to think what it was called, the revenue projections, they came in and had a chart that had the requested FY17 budgets from different departments. And I'm not sure if that gets posted because it was a, a part of their meeting. But basically going through it, they had a placeholder for the school committee that was at 4% um, to get clarity on where the 4% came from. Well, I'm not sure we got clarity on where the 4% came from, but we did learn that it is not a message that we should be at 4% or that's the expectation. It was literally just a placeholder. And um, other, there was a huge variation. So other departments were up as high as 16%. So. Um, although they gave 4% for the school committee placeholder, I, I think that we should be aware of it, but we should know that I specifically asked if it was a message and they said it was not. Um, I think that, is that? I will say that they all seem to have really clearly heard from Dr. McLeod about um, upcoming needs of the schools as far as particularly around ELL and um, that space is tight and, you know, enrollment is robust. <laughs> So um, so that was good. I was pleased that they understand sort of going forward what some of our challenges might be. And, and the only other thing I'll add is that um, they, were, they, were making, they made very strong statements about, you know, not bringing forward capital projects unless they were absolutely necessary and already included in camp. Um, so as, <laughs> that's going to be germane to our conversation later on tonight. So. Okay, so that's it for my report, and then, um, yeah? That, that I, I just thought, found notable in there, which is that it, it, for this stage of the game, it was actually one of the more positive revenue projections I've seen. Oh, they described it as a very challenging year. Yes. With, the, with the new growth projection at this stage is almost... They thought that might go down, and okay. they were talking about a $2.9 million deficit, something like that. Okay. So, I, I obviously, just, I, I all of it. I was at the meeting. Yeah. I just noted it when I read through when the documents that it, the, the, usually the, the November version is very, very conservative. The talk was scarier than okay. the paper, but I, yeah. I thought, did you? Th I, I didn't think the talk was positive or didn't make me leave feeling like, okay, we're all in good shape. I, I think it's going to be a tough year. But I think a lot of things will change. You have a new finance director so coming on board, and I, I think a lot of it's very preliminary. I mean, thanks for trying to put a positive thing. <laughs> I just, I said, all I have, is the, paper, all is I have is the paper in front of me, and it's usually a really neat really piece of paper in November, so. Um, okay, so, superintendent's report. Do we have anything to report? Not tonight. Okay, and we will, the next um, report is the World Language Plan, and that's... Yeah, we're well ahead of schedule. Uh, okay. This was scheduled to be on at 7.50. I've asked the people to be here at 7.40, so I'd suggest if maybe we could take some other things and move it up, and then they'll be here shortly. If John keeps talking... No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I do not, but thank you very much. Wow.
Also, as part of my report, I'm going to report <laughs> on our, <laughs> that's well, good, um, the executive session that we had at our last meeting where we reviewed um, executive session minutes. So on October 22nd, 2015, this school committee uh, held an executive session for the purposes of reviewing past executive session minutes in accordance with MGL section 30A22. The minutes that we reviewed in the action taken on the minutes of the following executive session are being reported. Uh, we did. We looked at July 9th, 2013. The decision was to release with redactions and all supporting documents. We reviewed August 8th, 2013, and the decision was to release with attachment number one. We looked at January 16, 2014. The decision was to release with all supporting documentation. We looked at March 6, 2014. The decision was to release with redactions and all supporting documents. We looked at um, <laughs> sorry, May 15, 2014. And the decision was to release the minutes, but not the supporting documents. And we also looked at June the 12th, 2014. The decision was to release the minutes, but without the supporting documents. Thank you for the reminder. Okay. They're still not here, so let's <laughs> move on to new business item A. Um, naloxone, Narcan in the school setting, and I think uh, Mr. Berlow is going to speak to that. Yes, I am. So you've received a report from the uh, nurses around that. Um, Essentially, we've gotten a grant, and it's uh, to support not only um, the implementation, but training of staff as well, nurses, and the, um, to put the program into effect. And so I'd open it up if you have any specific questions around that. And so just so we know, for our consideration, is the safe and effective management of opioid-related overdose in the schools to be incorporated into the District Emergency Preparedness and Response Plan. The school nurse will facilitate access to naloxone for the management of OPR-related overdose in the school setting. And we have a rec recommended motion. Are there any questions with respect to the, rep the report that we had or Mr. Burlow's comments? Yeah, actually, I, if I do have a comment. Um, I am on the coalition uh, that, that the Director of Youth Services has started, and we discussed this at our last meeting. And um, several of the police officers who were there were saying, according, it, in the plan, it's um, describing that one kit will be given to each school. Yes. But several of them were, were recommending that, particularly at the middle and the high school, several kits get, be given um, because what they said is that in, one, in any given incident, it's very common to have to administer more than one dose, as many, in their experience, as many as six. Um, so... And there's obviously going to be a lag time between calling 911 and when the police, w who will have other doses on, on their cruiser, would get there or the fire department. So um, my, my only suggestion is that we not be specific about the number, um, which the plan is. <coughs> so it, it's not in the motion, but it's in the plan. Um, that we not be specific about the number and that we let the school nurse work that out with the director of youth services. And I did confirm with her before um, the meeting she's willing they they are paying for it and she's willing to do whatever is necessary through the grant funding but so that's my only suggestion that we consider changing I've made a note of that I don't have any information about what's in the kit does it include more than one dose it's, so I know it's one okay yeah so the request is to revise the the plan to not be specific as to the number given per school So with that being an amendment, are we prepared to, to make a motion to approve the plan with that as an amendment for safe and effective access, or would we like to see it again? Um, okay, with the amendment. The school nurse. So would the amendment be amendment? next steps at the bottom yeah. I would remove yes I'll leave it as naloxone uh, is available for grant funding and I'll pick up the last part there that says one per school yeah I mean I'm comfortable for making a motion if that's amended mm -hmm. 
Okay, is there any other um, comments or amendments to the plan before we make a motion? So I'd seek a motion to approve the pro proposed plan summary for safe and effective access to Narcan by school nur nurses as amended. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Birchman. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes and so carries. I um, mean, yes. Um, next item is Hopkinton High School Hopkins School Roof Replacement Project. And for our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent as a result of the funding approval at the May 2015 annual town meeting. Um, Mr. Dumas, do you want to make a statement? Sure. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, as you know, we received funding in the amount of $1,114,000 last May to uh, replace uh, portions of roofs uh, at the Hopkins and the high school. Um, the town has a designer selection policy, which is fairly new. Um, when we did the Elmwood School a few years ago, uh, the town's designer selection policy was not in place at that time. The policy says that if a project is going to cost under $500,000, uh, the school department can uh, undertake the hiring of a, a designer, typically an engineer, for a roof replacement project. Uh, if it's over $500,000, um, either the Board of Selectmen will uh, appoint a designer selection committee or the school committee has uh, the, the right to request that um, the school committee be allowed to undertake that uh, part of the project and so um, we're asking uh, because the estimated cost of the project exceeds the five hundred thousand dollar delegation threshold threshold we're recommending that the school committee vote to ask the board of selectmen to delegate the responsibility to the school committee to appoint appropriate individuals to serve on, to, to serve on the design and selection board for this project a couple of reasons for that uh, number one, w we've demonstrated that we do have the expertise uh, to uh, to do this, and in particular, I would point out uh, the the Elmwood roof, uh, and also uh, that would mean that we wouldn't be putting a burden on other town departments um, at a busy time of the year. So, you know, we're ready, willing, and able to undertake this, and with uh, your uh, requ uh, with with your approval. And the board of selectmen's approval, we can we can get that done. So, are there any comments or questions with respect to the <coughs> motion that's before you, or Mr. Dumas's comment? Okay, so I would seek a motion to approve that the school committee requests approval from the board of selectmen to hire an engineering firm to design the high school Hopkins school roof replacement project. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 It's unanimous you. and so carries. Next up um, is the capital budget recommendation. For our consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent to approve the FY17 capital improvements request to be forwarded to the capital improvements committee for consideration. So uh, I put in front of you today um, larger versions of uh, information that you've already seen. Um, the one that's highlighted in pink was the 10-year um, capital plan that was updated by the school committee last March. And uh, the one that's highlighted in yellow is uh, an updated version. Um, it's what you were presented uh, on November 5th. So um, the highlights, uh, actually I have a memo here uh, which goes through and, and sort of identifies the, uh, the differences. Uh, joint technology and joint security upgrades. In um, last year's version, um, we combined with the town to jointly request um, funding for those types of projects. This year, um, we're recommending that these projects be submitted independently by the school department. Uh, buildings and grounds equipment. The FY17 request for a replacement tractor has been increased uh, from $51,000 to $81,000 to fund the addition of some uh, attachments. Middle school auditorium upgrades, um, the previous request has been increased from $67,000 to $167,000 uh, to add the installation of air conditioning in the auditorium to the previous request, which was 
for stage curtains and uh, rigging and, and that sort of thing. Uh, the elementary school building program is simply a placeholder. It's that will come off the uh, um, the ten-year plan pending a, a positive uh, vote next week. Um, middle school water heater is something new. Um, we're running into some difficulties there. Uh, the middle school water heater is probably not in camp uh, for FY17, but you know the reality is that we need a water heater. Um, the bus parking lot. Uh, this is a project uh, that has been uh, had some conversations behind the scenes for a number of years, um, and um, I know that there have been some communications between um, Superintendent McLeod and um, I think was it the uh, members of the Board of Selectmen uh, regarding this. And uh, so we brought it forward. Uh, we worked with Compass Project Management and their um, subcontractors to pull together an estimate of what it would cost uh, to construct a 25,000 square foot uh, gravel parking lot on the site of the new elementary school. Uh, we figured while they were clearing, uh, we might be able to save some money on it by having them clear some additional uh, area. Uh, the important part about the parking lot is that it has a pretty quick payback uh, because um, un under our existing contract, um, because we don't have a parking lot, uh, A, I, I believe that it stifles competition among transportation companies because trying to find space is very, very difficult for them. Connolly has uh, a, a, a parking lot in Ashland that they house the Ashland and Hoppington buses there. I know they pay rent on that. So if we had a parking lot here and they didn't have to pay rent for our buses to, um, to park, um, we'd be the beneficiary of savings on our, um, on our contract. That's number one. Number two, because the buses park in Ashland, Ashland gets all of the excise taxes on the buses. And number three, the, there's an additional cost to uh, in wear and tear on buses plus hours of labor uh, every time the buses have to go back and forth from um, Ashland Hopkinton three times a day back and forth. Uh, and uh, that's worth uh, an estimate of $111,000 um, in a combined savings and additional revenue uh, to the town. And uh, Obviously, that depends upon what the price of uh, diesel fuel is. And that was put yeah. together. The yeah. price of diesel fuel is a little bit higher. Um, so uh, that's in there. Bleacher repairs uh, at the middle and the high school. Uh, that's a new project. May not be in camp. I, I didn't even think to look in a camp. You know, the fact of the matter is camp was done three or four years ago. And, and things were different three or four years ago in terms of, uh, in terms of our needs. Things uh, break. They need to be repaired. Uh, or upgraded, and, and that's the case with these bleacher repairs. System-wide security upgrades, uh, that was previously a joint project, and what that represents now is a, a brand new student information uh, system. Uh, and I, once we get into this a little bit deeper, I know that Bob yeah. uh, has something to say about that. Uh, system-wide uh, security upgrades is the one that I, I skipped over. Uh, that was previously part of the joint projects. Uh, a new turf field. Uh, this has been on our plan uh, for the past few years. Um, what we're asking for here is design services uh, in the amount of $200,000. That's been accelerated from FY18 to FY17, again, in response to uh, communications that have taken place um, offline between the administration and uh, other folks in town. Um, administrative office solution has been there for as long as I've been here. Uh, we pushed that out from FY17 to FY18, uh, as did we with the uh, Elmwood School building renovation. Buildings and ground storage facility has, has been on, uh, uh, on the plan for a few years. Um, we're asking for design services. Uh, the, the likelihood would be that we might request that we be allowed to use some of the land at the new school for that as well. Um, that would uh, be a... I would think a prefabricated uh, building, but you still have to go through a design process. Uh, middle school gym partition is a project that's been on the plan, uh, and I, I believe it's been on camp as well. Uh, that's been removed from the plan 
after having conversations with uh, uh, Principal um, Keller. Um, the, the original project was to install um, mechanical, um, uh, to mechanize the opening and closing of the, of the door. The teachers are fine with it as it is. Uh, they like the fact that it's a, a hard um, surface so they can use it like to throw balls against uh, rather than replacing it with a, uh, a curtain. Uh, which they wouldn't be able to, you know, utilize for that purpose. Um, how, do, how am I doing? You're doing All right. great. Um, the student information system previously was a standalone project. Now it's part of the uh, part of the the annual technology upgrades. And the last one is one that got put on very late. Hopkins boiler. Hopkins, uh, when when the building was originally installed, they installed two Cleaver Brooks boilers, and historically. Well, since that time, Cleaver Brooks boilers have become notorious for, um, for issues. Um, one of the two uh, boilers has already been replaced at the Hopkins School with insurance money. Um, in this case here, uh, we, uh, Al in particular, was able to persuade the insurance company to come up with some money, and they unfortunately wrote a check for $42,000 to the town rather than giving us the opportunity to uh, uh, conduct a procurement, re do the work, and then they would pay the vendor directly. Because the insurance check exceeds $20,000 under Mass General Law, it has to go to the town and back through the appropriation project process. So um, that means that we had to add this to our, um, to our list. So for many years now, the Hopkins School has only been operating with one boiler. And so, you know, we're happy that we have the money. Well, we thought we had the money. Uh, we're happy that there's an opportunity for us to uh, to get the funding to finally put in a backup boiler. Um, we've been fine for as long as I've been here with one boiler, but I don't think we want to, uh, you know, continue down that path as the good boiler uh, gets older. So uh, with all that in mind, um, you know, we're ready, willing, and able to answer any questions that you might have. So is this, is yellow listed by order of recommended priority? Uh, no, it's not. No. no, we have not prioritized. We, we put it out there. Um, typically, we prioritize as we move our way through the process a little bit uh, deeper. to move the, our, our recommended capital to CIC yeah. with the expectation that there could be changes to it, prioritization is going to happen, some of these numbers might get flushed out a little bit in a little bit more detail as we go through the budget process. Absolutely correct. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're not, um, I wouldn't say that we're married to this, but I would say that um, adding something to this after this, yeah at th this point would probably not be looked upon favorably. <coughs> you know, taking something off obviously would. So the, so I'll start, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, with respect to the bus parking lot, which is, again, something as you indicated we've been talking about for a long time, and the building's ground storage facility, when we think about the potential location of those, I know in the bus parking lot case we've had some discussions with the town, but there is a subcommittee that advisory committee mm -hmm. to look at the remainder of the Irvine and the Tadaro property usage. From a timing perspective, does this sync up? So I, I'm wondering, is, does FY17 make sense for these based on the timeline that, that we're looking at for for those subcommittees? Well, I, I'm not familiar with, you know, the inner workings of the subcommittee that you're re referring to. I don't know whether they've, you know, had any meetings or, or anything like that. So I'm uh, the appointee from the school committee, and we, they just yeah. appointed me at the last BLS, right? So uh, they yeah. did their appointment, so there's been no no meeting. Yep, okay, good. But I guess we could yep. leave it on there, and then by the yep. time we get towards January, we'll have a better idea of what the timing on that subcommittee is. I just, yeah. I, I want to make sure we're not sort of cart before the horse in terms sure. of, we, we don't actually have that plan as yeah. the school district. The, uh, actually, what, what's interesting is that um, Compass um, identified very, very quickly where this lot would go. 
in their mind. So, uh, yeah. Again, I and I'm completely on board with it. I think it's an easy sell. I think most people are going to are going to expect that that's something that we might per that we would pursue for that land. I just, from a process perspective, want to make sure we're not. Sure. I don't want to get to town meeting and be asking to fund something before a, a master plan has been approved. Can I ask another? Uh, well, let me make a comment, yep. John. Uh, it's our opinion that the timing is spot on for this. Okay. Um. With respect to timing, when do we go out to bid again for bus contracts? Oh, I wish I, I knew that. Sorry. Okay, I, actually, let me think about this. Um, this, the current year, is the third year of a contract that is a three-year contract with a two-year option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Kathy and I talked a little bit about this uh, about a month ago, about maybe, you know, I, I wish uh, I, I had spent a little bit more time thinking about that, uh, Ellen, because I, I think we determined that we may want to go out, we're going to go out to bid anyways right now to, to determine whether or not the option is in our best interest. Okay. Okay. So we can look at the timing on that. The options, uh, for your information, are two one-year options. It's not mm -hmm. a two-year option. So you've got a little bit of flexibility there okay. to try to make this work so that, you know, you'd have a, a bus lot in place at the time that you were bidding. That's the ideal. Okay. Thank so you. So we can look at that. Can I tag in on that? Uh, I, I think we put something in the last contract that we could reopen or renegotiate if a lot were developed or identified. Yep. Um, but my question is um, regarding whether this is appropriately a school capital project or it's something that the town should do or we should do jointly with the town because as you pointed out the town gets actually probably a greater financial benefit from the um, from the excise taxes we certainly get a financial benefit from the um, the cost related to the busing and it's on our property however the town also did not um, choose to have the school committee be responsible for um, the funding of the school mm -hmm. so I just think that's a conversation um, that it, it may be should be a joint yeah. article or something that, that's that a good the town point. sponsors just for your information three years ago the estimate on the excise tax wasn't as much as you would think it's fifteen thousand dollars a year but that's forever all right yeah right Out of the 111 uh, the biggest is is the savings in labor and uh, in diesel yeah. fuel. Okay. All those well, I would, I've misremembered that then. Yeah. But at any rate, so I think that's probably just a question. Um, Good question. Whether it should be a a joint article? Can I? Did you have more questions? I, have one more I didn't question want on the parking lot. I didn't want to wrap that up before we do. So, I know in the past we've talked about things across parking lots, and a couple of times around you pointed out that it requires more space than people think because it's parking for the buses and yeah. then additional parking for the drivers. Right. So what it got me thinking is one of the big conversations that has happened around the new school is volume of available parking for mm -hmm. special events like back to school mm -hmm. nights. Would this provide us even more parking for those kind of events if it were placed in that area? Would well, we use the driver parking basically? Sure it would, yeah. Okay. I mean, this is we're talking 25,000 square feet. That's yeah. what you need. And so and there's no reason it wouldn't be accessible when the driver's right. cars aren't there. Absolutely. Cars special yep. like that. Absolutely. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's additional potential benefit to the town. I know because that has been yeah. raised. For and it, it's going to be lit with security, cameras. With security cameras. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I have one more bus question. Um, and forgive me, Kathy, because it actually may more be directed at you. But um, I know that... I know sign language. <laughs> 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 I haven't done that in a while. The rest of us don't. Um, we constantly are being asked questions about school schedules and bus timing and all that. When you have a bus parking lot within district, does that change time on bus at all or no? No. No, it no, would, that not. would not. No. Okay. No. That is my only yeah. question about the buses. I have other questions, but well, you I had can a question go back about to the parking lot too. So that includes um, does there fencing and lighting and so that is all within, it talks about construction of the parking lot, but it's a yep. parking lot project, That's including it. everything. Right. Okay. And it would include um, a, a short access road, I think, to get to the parking lot as well. Okay. That's all. And did that. you say gravel, not paved? Yeah, pavings. Yeah, with paving, you, you, you get into more expense, plus you have to wor worry about water runoff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the gravel that they use, 
the bus company actually said that okay when I, when I talked to and them you can plow yeah yeah yep. and there's no okay who knew I think the most important part of the, the lot is I believe that it will promote competition. And that's oh, absolutely. the biggest yeah. opportunity to save money. I can't prove that, but, you know, in, in my gut, I, I believe that to be uh, a fact. Can't make it worse. Right. <laughs> can't get fewer bids. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I suppose. Are, are we going to keep, are you keep going? I'm, or? Bus, so. I'm good on bus. I don't know if. I had a couple other questions, but I, not on the bus. I have yeah. several, too, so I don't know whose turn it is. You do you guys want to take turns? <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't know how you want to do this. Um, so I don't uh, Does it make sense for us to prioritize, or we want to ask questions first? But if we prioritize what we think the, the priorities are of the committee, then, then maybe, you know, something's going to be, I don't know, level 10, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on it. We're due to prioritize this tonight. Are, don't we? Do we have to prioritize this before yeah. to go to capital improvement? No, no, you know, it might be a good idea for for um, f for us to powwow and, and prioritize this. Okay, and come back with recommendations. That yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. I guess just have that questions like willy-nilly yeah it would be good if we could just send this along unless something unless you think something is really crazy and then we can fine-tune it that way we meet our obligation and uh, you know to pass it along and our obligation is earlier this year I I, I think they were actually they're gonna be meeting in in November it's usually 1231 is our mm -hmm. deadline isn't it uh, for capital they would re they really like to take a peek at it earlier you know? Capitals earlier than twelve thirty one. I don't know that that's in the charter. Right. Do you? you know? In the timeline. In the right. budget timeline. Budget timeline. Yeah, that's shared with us. Um, all right. Well, can I start then? Since okay, we seem to be playing a game <laughs> of chicken here. Step up, Jean. Um, I actually, I, I'll just go in order of your of your <laughs> memo. Um, the air conditioning in the auditorium for the high school, middle, middle school. school. Um, why, well, why are we adding that? Um, I, I think because it, it's heavily used and oftentimes it's used at, a time, at times of the year when it can be stifling in, in, that, uh, in that auditorium. And obviously it's heavily used not only by the school department but by the general public as well. Mm -hmm. But not in the summer. Mm -mm. No, but there's been some very hot town meetings that have been in there, uh, not just from the debate point of view, but from the temperature point of view. So, right, exactly. You don't want them too comfortable. <laughs> but it's also yeah. for concerts, performances, yeah. those types of things as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you say how old the water heater is at the middle school? Uh, you know, somebody who's going to be here at age 20. Uh, that would be Mr. Rogers okay. who would know the answer to that question. I don't know. But this is just like a replacement due to age. Yes, it's not it is. something we need to check the warranty or no, no, okay. no. It's it's old. Okay, um, and then oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's installed in 1996. I'm 1996. sorry. Yep, so, it's so is that a typical? Old. Is that a typical life? Um, 20 years for yeah, water yeah, heater. I mean, yeah, that's that's so. pretty good. <laughs> that's one at your house, it's great. You know. Yeah, I mean. Um, okay. The, um, yeah, the turf field, I think, is definitely going to be a longer discussion for a different day, um, mm -hmm. moving it up based on the message that I heard on Tuesday night. I, I'm not sure they're still looking for that. So, um, I mean, I'm not advocating for changing it right now, but I would expect that that might be a, a bigger conversation as we go forward. Um, the, so the storage facility that's planned to go on the new school property. Okay, so I just I think I just want to echo the conversation we've already had about you know all of that's going to have to be part of the discussion with the master plan um, committee. Absolutely. Um, and then so the, the, am I understanding that the Hopkins boiler, this 
is the one that we replaced that no. we're putting on there and no. trying to get the money for it or the, 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 we replaced one I think just about the time that I arrived uh -huh. so five years ago six years ago and this is the backup boiler the second boiler they installed when they built the building two boilers oh okay no I get that but but the town has the money for it already yes and so we're just basically putting it on here hoping to get the money that's already existing plus thirteen thousand dollars because we have to now do design and the insurance company you know it's an it's new they didn't fully uh, you know cover the cost of a new boiler including okay. design um, and then um, assuming a positive vote on Monday I think we also need to look at taking off number 18 yep and number 21 yep um, that's correct okay so I just want to make sure that's on somebody's radar screen yep. that, see they're, they're there Down and they're there. bolded so we know that be avoided. okay they're what they're they're in the below. Note for it. It'll say maybe avoided. Maybe avoided if item nine goes forward. Likely avoided. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. I did. I didn't see that on the small one. I do see that now. Thank you. And then, um, and then the only other thing that I wanted to ask about is the scoreboard in the high school, is really um, in tough condition. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a very that's time, extraordinary ma yeah, maintenance. Okay, that's yeah, so that yeah. doesn't have we, to go. We had that conversation today reviewing the buildings okay. and grounds extraordinary maintenance budget. Yep, okay. It's in there. All right, very good. That was all I had. Thank you. Um, so I just have a couple things. One, um, with respect to the turf field, so I, I agree that may be a challenging ask right now with everything we have going on, less than 200000 but I imagine the discussion will be more around the, we have a placeholder of 2.1 for the actual field itself. Originally it was million seven fifty all in. Or am I, hold on. You're on the next row. Oh, I'm on the next row. Oh, because oh, so that, cause I was looking at the 200. That says 100 still on here. Yeah. But, Okay. So whatever the, the cost is going to be, are we um, are we looking at the possibility of offsetting cost of construction with other organizations in town? Like would we get donations to that? Because I know like HYS that they're having these soccer expressed in the past. Other organizations is that a potential cost offset? So when Kathy and I met with um, Kathy and I met with the with the chair of the board of selectmen and uh, Kathy's had separate other conversations with Parks and Rec and originally that's how it was sort of brought to the table we should we should do this as a joint article but then um, and, and I say that from the Parks and Rec's perspective and from um, and I think they were considering the HYS youth and other other sport programs use of the the fields um, but board of selectmen at, at least the chair in our conversations felt that it's our it's on our property it's our ask that doesn't stop us I guess from fundraising or asking well, for the, donations yes, can, but I don't yeah. that's <coughs> not something that has been factored into the okay. 1.75 and has been fully vetted we'd have to appropriate the full amount through the, the, through our capital ask but to potentially look for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. To offset. And, and just so everyone understands, what's on here now is just a feasibility study. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that it's sort of I, I, knowing how these conversations go. I don't think we're going to be talking about the feasibility study if this comes to town meeting floor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. So it, it's um, good point, John. So uh, that, that's why I just wanted to, to, to ask that question. To think about that question too. The um, I know we've talked about the high school major upgrades, but. Uh, Pardon me if I'm forgetting, but the middle school, I don't know if we talked about the middle school before. No. Okay, so no. what is the need for repair and upgrade? Uh, they're, you know, moving, as you, the more often you move them in and out, it, it. It's just general wear and tear. General wear and tear, okay. yeah. And this would mechanize them. Are these just the interior ones? Yes. Oh. Yeah. What about repairs to the outside ones? Uh, out at the football field? Well, there's some broken ones on field 13, mm -hmm. at least I know that. I don't know if there are other needs like that. To turn it down. Oh, yeah. Um, that has not been. Or maybe that's just you know, an extraordinary that's maintenance. Kind of routine maintenance, sir. Okay. Yeah. Field 13? Yeah. I'll make a note. Um. Yeah, in, in terms of the high school, um, the high school one we were hoping to get done at the end of last year, but due to the fact that the timing on that was such that, um, you know, the, the committee, you know, in retrospect, probably a good idea based upon some of the 
uh, issues in, in SPED, uh, decided to utilize that money to prepay SPED. Yeah. So it's it's back. The, 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 the need is still there. So that's the extent of my questions. Um, the only comment that I will have with respect to sort of my general feeling on it, on capital as compared to, and again, I will once again say I was traveling, so I was not at the Board of Selectmen meeting, but somebody made mention of them not wanting anything brought forward that wasn't part of camp. As the person who was a representative from the school committee on camp, camp was done four years ago at this point. It was quite we a long time. We have a different ago. superintendent. Yeah. We have one principal who is the same for when we originally did camp. And we've asked every single year, multiple times, to engage in a discussion to refresh camp yeah. because needs change. So from my personal voting perspective, I am not going to give a lot of credence to what is or is not on camp because we've tried to have this discussion multiple times and our needs have changed and evolved. And I think we've been really clear about that. So yeah. I, I, I would love a camp program that would actually be a living program and be refreshed. But since that hasn't happened, I don't think we need to be beholden to a four-year-old document that was done by a lot of people who aren't here anymore. Thank you for, say, for saying that, John. Yeah. Well, I think most of mine, I, I wondered about the air conditioning, just be based on usage. It seems like that's $135,000 of the project, if the other part was going to be only thirty-two, unless that had gone up. I think it was 100. No, 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 actually it was 67. The 32 was work that's already been done. Uh, that oh, was, okay. Yeah. I thought that was coming so, off. It was, so it was a hundred for the... Uh, so how much is the air conditioning part of this? That's a hundred. A hundred thousand yeah. dollars? Yeah. yeah. That just seems like a lot of money for the amount of usage of that building. So that would be, mm -hmm. I don't know, that lean tips towards a want column in, in my mind. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just wanted to say in terms of the buildings and ground storage facility, we had, you know, some walkabout of the, of the areas back here based on some feedback from the public. And we looked at, and there's so much equipment that right now sits out and that storage facility to hold, I think, really is more of a need than a than a want. So I was happy to see that one on here where it's placed. But um, just things that we thought weren't in use anymore, we found out they look like that because that's the only place they can stay. There's no place to to really store them. So I was happy to see that one. So mm -hmm. I think that those are really my only comments. And I question about the the buses, but everyone are already asked that. Yeah, so that's thank it. you. Thanks. Um, in terms of the buildings and grounds equipment, what are the attachments that are being yeah, added? Do you know? I don't remember. It's a plow. One of them yeah. is a plow. Yeah. Probably a sweeper. And what, just to refresh my memory on the tractor, is that what's used on the loop road and all the sidewalks and, or is it used for all the buildings? It's used for a, a variety of, uh, of things. Um, and I, I, the only thing I, I would want to point out is that it's um, it's 16 or 17 years old, the existing tractor, um, and we've tried to have a seven-year replacement cycle here, and we've never quite made the seven years. It's always longer, and you know, with this one being 16 or 17 years old, um, you know, we're, we're we keep paying the you know, have it repaired. Yeah, I appreciate that, like, it's operating on borrowed time. Yeah. I guess my question is, though, is just understanding the uses yeah. for the one that we're currently using and what the planned uses would be for the new one. I mean, $30,000 in attachments is, it, it's more than half of what the tractor costs, so that's what I was just trying to figure out. Yep. Um, we can get you that information. And speaking from someone that's not does not have kids that use the turf field and doesn't know what's going on with the turf field, what can you just explain to me like the needs of the turf field in in terms of I mean obviously two hundred thousand dollars for a feasibility study sounds like a lot to me, but it may not be that much. But I'm just trying to understand like the, to make the, the turf field's been brought up both years that I've been on the committee thus far, and I just don't know what the issues are on the turf field currently. Surrounding districts and yeah. going to all of the different. Um, so our fields are in bad shape, is what we hear. Other schools don't like playing here. 
Um, is that fair? You have high school. I, mean, I, I think that that's, this is what, I, this is what I've heard. Yeah. This is what I think Kathy would say. Um, <laughs> <coughs> where it's, the, the football field isn't level. We just, we don't have facilities that are like our surrounding districts or like our competitive town. So we don't have, it. the only turf field we have in town is the Fruit Street. Mm -hmm. um, and Parks and Rec has allowed us to use it, but it's not at the schools and it's not a facility for our teams. Yeah, this is not for the football, football field. This is for other fields that um, can be used for uh, multiple sports, whether you're talking about oh. soccer, um, lacrosse, uh, field hockey. Um, it's a, for a variety of... Uh, of you're on. Which just illustrates why a lot oh. more conversation needs to go into it. Okay, we're talking about... Right. The only thing right now, we're taking care of most of it through the chair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello. We're talking yeah. about the field, the uh, artificial turf. Okay. And so what Dr. McLeod uh, told me is that a lot of surrounding districts uh, have uh, the turf fields, and we do not. So when people play on different ones, that's one thing they do compa compare, and that's probably why we've heard some complaints. The other thing is that uh, it's easier to get it ready at the beginning of the year when there's a lot of moisture in the ground, et cetera, and there's challenges to get our fields uh, up and running. And one of the things that concerns us the most is around student safety when they're playing sports and with uh, fields uh, with ruts and things like that because the grass just hasn't got to where we need it to be. That's a challenge as well. So all those things factor into this. Good evening, Mr. Rogers, and thank you for, for joining us. We'll say to, we'll say to, that, to that point, I mean, you talk about surrounding districts. I mean, the, my, my kids play soccer, not obviously at the high school level, but play in a lot of different school fields in surrounding towns, and it feels like every other town has we're, these facilities. We're the only um, yeah. school in the Tri Valley that doesn't have them. Except for Millis. Except for Millis. <laughs> but still, so that's that, that's a really yeah, that's a it, no, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's clarification, but I guess there's also quite a bit of controversy around turf fields and the chemicals used in turf fields too. So I, I, like Jean said, I think there is a broader discussion here. Um, Absolutely. And in in terms of <laughs> wants versus needs and keeping up with the Joneses of our neighboring districts, like uh, that's where, it's not that I don't appreciate the need for that with our sports teams because our sports teams work very hard and they're, they have, play at a very high level. But I mean, having a backup boiler in case we have a really harsh winter again is very concerning to me. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, some of those types of upgrades. But it's not that I I don't understand the need for it. I just didn't, I first didn't recognize the fact we didn't have one. Um, <laughs> that's one. <laughs> and then, um, and I guess it was just a bit of sticker shock in, in the amount for the entire project. Mm -hmm. Um, so, Lori, maybe maybe in response to what your comments just were, the point of where we could really discuss this is when we provide you with the prioritized list and you see where things are in priority, I think at that point it's very relevant to say, to have that discussion a little bit deeper. Also, I think at that time, Kathy's would be able to chime in uh, okay, like she sure. wants to. So. I, I think I just mm -hmm. also wanted you to have an idea of where I was thinking, because I know you're yep. going to make that priority list, and if that helps at all to have that Absolutely. Kind of understanding. Sure. Thank you. And then I think, Ralph, if we might want to circle back to my original question about the tractor since Mr. Rogers is here. There you go. <laughs> um, <coughs> the um, replacement tractor, we are told that the current one is 16 to 17 years old. We are 99, it was present. My question was what facilities the tractor is used on, if, if it's all the school facilities, and what accessories or attachments were um, added to the purchase price that the have it go up another $30,000. The, the tr tractors are used for um, uh, field maintenance. Um, we do a lot of that stuff in-house, seeding, irrigating, that type of stuff. Um, they're also used in snow removal. They have plows and snow blowers. Um, that's how we do the sidewalk on you know, one of the uh, things we use for the sidewalk on the hoop road that, you know, when the snow gets too uh, high for the, for the plow. There's a snowblower attachment for that. Um, also, um, uh, the attachments, um, we purchased an aerovator with, um, with the 99 tractor. Um, that um, is probably the piece of equipment we use the most for uh, keeping up with the, with, with the fields. 
um, that um, aerates the the soil and uh, you know it's a relief compaction um, and it also seeds so that's um, how we seed the fields um, also um, another um, attachment for that would be a, a flail mower on an arm so that we can uh, uh, take care of the sides of the roads and, and and specifically the loop, the loop road and sidewalks. So uh, it's less uh, man hours with a weed whacker. You know, it's, uh, oh, a lot less. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. While bringing in an outside contractor. <laughs> How, if at all, does this relate to the vehicle we bought last year, which we weren't <coughs> calling a tractor? It was a utility. It's yeah, a, a cart. utility vehicle. It's, utility it's vehicle. a uh, souped-up golf cart with a cab and a plow. Um, it also has a dump body on it. Move material around. Okay. Does that give you your answer, Lori? Yeah, thank you. That was all I had. The right time. <coughs> I was really more interested in the priorities. I guess I, I was confused in thinking that at some point this this was the pri this was how we were prioritizing them. <coughs> that was my biggest question, which we already answered. Um, I actually, I did not do the walk around, but I feel like one of the largest complaints I hear is about our, um, uh, the need for, that's not how they're expressing it, but the need for a storage Thank facility. You. Thank you. Um, so I, I think that it's actually important that it's on here. Um, you know, I, th I see that turf field is definitely a want as opposed to a need, and I think that that's that's why we'll have to discuss it a lot more sure because I think it's it is a huge want and it's a it's a want by a lot of people I guess I should say mm -hmm. um, so it's just it, that doesn't turn into a need I don't think so it, it just depends on where we're gonna put it um, but thank you for putting this together you're welcome thank you so um, so what's our let me go back to what our action is on this so I guess is there anything that we want to take off or that we want to add as a committee? Because I think that's that's really the decision we have to make, right? For at today, this, yes, this yes, that would be. Yeah. So for me personally, given the stage where we are, I don't have anything that is not on there that I think absolutely needs to be, and I don't have anything that I feel like needs to absolutely be taken off at this stage since we're going to have so much further discussion. I just mm -hmm. my only request would be that the motion be to approve the preliminary FY17 okay. capital improvement request, yep. just indicating that we're at the very early stages that we haven't even prioritized at this point. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments or edits to the motion? Will it be prioritized before you submit it, or that still comes later? Can I just ask a question about prioritize? Because we did that last year. In I think, uh, but I think that that resulted in some confusion um, once it got to town hall. In my mind, everything that we put forward for the next fiscal year is a priority because there are many other things on here that we have chosen not to put forward in that year. Um, and I think until the question comes back to us, is it possible to move anything else out? I think if we start saying these are number one, two, three, and these are number four, five, six, even though we want all six, if people hear it that way, then they <coughs> maybe are moving things without a discussion with, for, with us. It, in, in my mind, that's what happened last year. There was a lot of confusion about the resurfacing of the tennis courts, um, and they weren't on the original warrant, and blah, blah, blah. And I think that was part of it. So I just want to be careful about what we're calling a priority versus not a priority. I think, again, in, I just want to make sure I understand when I'm voting, but in my mind, anything that I'm voting to put forward in FY17 as a capital expenditure is a priority. And if we are then asked within that to identify which are our highest and lowest priorities, then I think that's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to have that conversation tonight. Okay. Clear. I've, I've made note of that so that when we come together next time, if we want to chunk together, we absolutely can do that. So then I guess that... <laughs> What my confusion then is what happens with this tonight? Does it go anywhere? Yeah, we would forward we this. Submit it to we the capital improvement committee. Yes. 
w with the caveat that it's preliminary and it's a working document. And then document. we have to meet with them later to say, to where they ask us questions and don't they have then to vote on any item over $25,000? So is there anything in our maintenance or extraordinary maintenance that's no. over $25,000? I don't believe so. Not as standalone okay. type things. Like the scoreboard wouldn't be? Yeah, They really don't. The Capital Improvements Committee has made it clear to us over the past few years that if it's not a standalone Warren article, they're not really interested in it. We used to show them the technology. Mm -hmm. You remember that, mm -hmm. uh, the budgeted technology. And they said, oh, we don't really care about that. So, All right, because uh, I feel like that is in the charter, So, but that's not their practice. I just want to make sure we're their giving them what they are looking for. And we're giving uh, we're giving them the whole reset 10-year capital plan, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was there a vote? No, 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 waiting on no. Oh, you're waiting on me? Yes, we are. Too. Okay, <laughs> the, um, I am seeking a motion to approve the preliminary FY17 capital improvement request. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Nicholson. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes unanimous and so carry. Did she say proposed on there? Okay, okay let's thank go back you. up. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. We're going to go back up to the World Language Plan because I believe we have Thank Mr. You. Youngberg, Ms. E Mrs. Eckwall, Mr. Keller, and Mrs. Merrill. Thanks, Al. Thanks. You guys have two more chairs when you say more. It wasn't a problem. <coughs> I was going to call you. Guys. Thank you, sir. <coughs> can we squeeze up at the table a little bit? I showered. You can scoot over. Yeah. <laughs> get, get right in next to Jean. She's like the only one not sick. Your, your <laughs> microphone's going to yank <laughs> off your shirt, though. I don't think anybody really wants it. They won't miss much. <laughs> there we go. Hello. <laughs> You drew the short straw. <laughs> Was that next to you? Yeah. <laughs> so, Can I welcome. Introduce everybody? Are you going to are you going to be happy introduce to. them and yes. tell us what they're going to talk about? <laughs> yes. So tonight we have Mr. Keller uh, from the middle school, middle school principal. Uh, we, we have uh, Marilyn Miracle, our uh, world language uh, subject matter leader. We have Meredith Eckwall, our director of elementary education, and we have Mr. Youngberg, who's our uh, director of secondary education. And tonight what we're going to do is we thought prior to us meeting and talking about budget items, we wanted to give you some firm background information about what's involved with um, world language. We're looking to um, have these folks report out on us and what their recommendations are in terms of where's the program? What would be able the solid program if we were to expand it? And we wanted you to be able to have the opportunity to ask them questions about just that. What makes the solid program? And then from that, that would lead us into a more informed budget discussion that we would have in the a, in a upcoming meeting. So with that in mind, I'll turn it over. I know uh, Marilyn and Alan will talk a little bit about uh, expansion in the middle school, and then uh, Meredith and Dave will talk a little bit about expansion into the elementary grades and what that means. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How are you this evening? <laughs> All right. Okay. As you know, our community is and has been very interested in including world languages as part of our curriculum in earlier grades. The World Language Program Study of 2006 and two, through 2008 and a World Language Survey given in September 2014 indicated very strong support for an earlier start. The survey given in September 2014 indicated that 84 percent of respondents believe that world language instruction should begin in elementary school. Their belief that world language study should begin earlier is supported by current world language acquisition research. This research shows that the earlier one begins to study a world language, the greater the benefits are, especially if proficiency in a world language is the goal. It is the number of continuous hours of the study of a world language that best predicts the level of proficiency attained. More hours of study 
equals higher levels of proficiency. It is for this reason that we propose an expansion of our current world language program. In September 2014, Hopkinton families were surveyed about their language of choice. Spanish, Mandarin Chinese, and French were far and away the top three choices. This October, we asked them to rank these three top choices. Spanish was clearly the number one choice across all grades by a two to one margin. Mandarin Chinese and French were virtually tied for second place. In our schools, Spanish continues to be the language of choice for the majority of our students. Given the growing population of Spanish speakers in the United States, it only makes sense to support our already strong Spanish program. Our French program at the high school is also doing very well and has been steadily growing. The last two years, we've had French AP classes of 18 and 20 students, the most students studying AP French that Hopkinton High School has ever had. We support our French and Spanish high school programs with the middle school feeder program. However, students cannot begin studying this lang these languages until seventh grade. If we were to add sixth grade Spanish and French to the middle school, we would add an additional 180 hours of world language study, increasing the probability that our students would reach functional proficiency by the end of their course of study in French or Spanish. We currently have a very strong Mandarin Chinese program at the high school. And although students are very enthusiastic about studying Mandarin Chinese, their ability to acquire a higher level of proficiency is significantly limited by the number of instructional hours provided. There is a direct correlation between the number of continuous hours of world language study and the level of proficiency attained at the end of the course of study. Lending the same support to our Mandarin Chinese students that we provide for our French and Spanish students would greatly increase the effectiveness of our current program. <coughs> By adding 6th through 8th grade Mandarin Chinese, we would add an additional 540 hours of Mandarin Chinese study, fully supporting a sought-after critical language and increasing the likelihood that our students could reach functional proficiency in Chinese. The expansion of Spanish and French into grade 6 and the addition of Mandarin Chinese into grades 6 through 8 will require an additional 3.0 teachers as well as instructional materials such as textbooks. The committee before you today uh, researched several different models of implementation for a world language program at the elementary level. Most elementary school programs focus on a single language at the elementary level over multiple years, <coughs> excuse me, typically beginning in the early primary grades K through 1 and supporting the program upward through the grade levels. In looking at such programs, the ideal model of implementation for elementary world language in Hopkinton is the FLESS model, which stands for foreign language in the elementary schools. A FLESS model would enable students across the elementary grades to engage in language learning opportunities. FLESS is an approach to language learning that allows students to develop basic communicative skills in a language while reinforcing and enriching the content in other disciplines. The FLESS model enables students to engage in language learning concurrent with another content area. For instance, students in a FLESS model learn Spanish while also studying another subject. Generally, programs have 30 minutes of instruction two to three times a week through the elementary level grades, and that would be K through five. When FLESS is implemented with fidelity for 75 to 90 minutes per week, elementary students attain a higher level of proficiency in their chosen language by the end of the course of study, are more likely to successfully acquire other languages such as math, music, and art, develop cross-cultural awareness. After gathering data from the 2015 Community Survey on World Languages in the Hop Hopkinton Public Schools, the outstanding preference for the community was clearly Spanish. In addition, more than 8 out of 10 respondents believe that world language study should begin at the elementary level. Therefore, Spanish would be the language offered at the elementary level. The expansion of Spanish into the elementary schools would require three full-time Spanish teachers and instructional materials. Thank you very much. Um, we did pull that together this afternoon, what everybody read, and we'll be happy to scan that and get it to you tomorrow so you can uh, see all those details that we're, we put a lot of thought into there. And at this time, we'd like to open it up if you do have any questions about what was presented here in the report tonight.
What were the elementary hours that, that you just cited? <coughs> minutes that, um, that are most effective? Yeah. 75 <laughs> to 90 minutes a week. A week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I guess that, that leads into the, the question that I have from sort of both levels of it, which is where does that come from? So if we think about 75 to 90 minutes in an elementary school, uh, we know we're not adding 75 to 90 minutes a week to the day. So what is it that's sort of at the expense of? So a FLESS model isn't an add-on the way it would be as a separate subject um, that's taught in separate from the content areas at the middle school. At the elementary level, it's integrated into the content areas. Okay. So in other words, it wouldn't take the place of something else. It would be integrated in, into that already existing curriculum. So it's 75 to 90 minutes a week of curriculum that they're getting in another subject area right. that would have foreign language integrated into it. That's correct. Okay. So then I'll maybe move the same question over here, which is then from a sixth grade perspective, where does that? Yeah, so um, so seventh and eighth grade have foreign language, obviously. Yeah. So um, each academic, if you look at our schedule in the middle school, each academic in grade seven and eight has 60 minute uh, period, day, uh, 60 minutes in the day. And our sixth grade schedule, uh, we have a, a more flexible schedule in that um, certain days you'll have an academic that's 75 minutes so a math class might be 75 minutes. So it would, so to get foreign language into sixth grade, then all periods would move to 60 minutes in length and reflect the same schedule structure as seventh grade. Exactly. And then with respect to the, the we talked about with the FTE and, yes, and yes. materials, that's probably more of a question for December. When we start talking yeah, about Yeah, absolutely, right? that would be. Yeah, then I'll absolutely. Hold on. Okay. But on the on. So I thought I heard in there something about potentially adding Mandarin in the middle school. Is that included in the three FTEs? So that was not just for Spanish and K through 5. That was also including the Mandarin introduction? Yeah, the 3.0 at the middle school was, uh, was what we believe would be necessary for to add Spanish to grade 6 and Mandarin Chinese at the middle school. Okay, so it's three at the middle school and yeah. then an additional three for K to 5, so it's six total? Okay. So Kelly, just so that we're re really clear on this, in the middle school, it would be adding Mandarin to grades six, seven, and eight, and so students could take that, and adding Spanish, uh, Spanish and French to grades six. six as well. Yeah. Okay. So in some cases, then the teachers that are cur currently teaching all of uh, seven and eight would teach a little bit less, so they could help out a little more in six, and then we would have a person that would handle six, seven, and eight for the Mandarin. So Mandarin teaching at the high school is already a full time. Yes, it is. Position. Yes, that person has a, a full uh, schedule. Okay. That, pro that program has grown. It has grown. Okay. And uh, it, it, I hear really good things about the Chinese teacher. My, my emails are, are really, really good praise for her. And then I wondered about, since it's the, the FLESS model, um, do other teachers need, so since it'll be incorporated into other types of curriculum, is there professional development needed as part of this for all the other teachers who are going to have? Yeah, we would include like all of that. classroom teachers. That's a great question. Yes, absolutely. We, what we don't want to have happen is uh, a teacher to come into this and say, "What's going on? I, I don't even have any idea how to I handle don't speak this, Spanish. or yeah, I yeah. don't know how to integrate this." And you're, what are you doing? And, and, and right. so we would definitely have some opportunity to pl not only do training of adults, but to plan out exactly what it is that we're going to cover in each grade level and how is it going to fit in and where. Okay, but three FTEs at the K to five are. Spanish teachers? There's Spanish teachers, one per building. Spanish teachers, though. Mm -hmm. Even right. though there's not dedicated Spanish classes, it is to implement this model across the different curriculums? Correct. Okay. We looked at a variety of models, and uh, there were pluses and minuses to them. And this is the one that seemed to make sense the more that we dug in a little bit deeper. And yeah. I want to just. Uh, thank the group here because they spent a lot of time in a short amount of time. They spent a lot of hours in a short amount of time to, to get to this point where we are. So. Okay. Oh. For other considerations, it says increased ELL needs. Is that decreased ELL needs at the end? Other considerations? 
What we're looking at is uh, that that's part of our bigger discussion as to when we're looking at programmatic things. And so that was to for you in terms of the, the whole budget discussion. That wasn't what the group here brought forward. Oh, I thought this was part of. No, that was things when Kathy language. and I talked and okay. uh, we said, you know, there's other things that we need to consider as well as we move forward. And so. Okay. I that, thought this was maybe a, a pro with, you know, no, I don't think it's related this, to this at all. The decrease in ELL. I, I guess if there is a. Anyway. Okay, thanks. So, a couple questions I have. So, in terms of space, there would be no additional space requirements because obviously we're dealing with space crunch in a lot of these <coughs> buildings as it is. In the elementary, that would be true, and I'd ask Mr. Kelly, to, Mr. Keller, to talk a Sorry, little bit yeah, about that's that. What I was focusing yeah. on yeah. the elementary, but. Yeah. Um, but is there a concern at the middle school level? Yeah, so, it, well, not necessarily a concern, but um, the, the foreign language instruction would, with, uh, would be a teacher on a cart going to, to classroom. So, um, I mean, that's, I know that happens at the high school at, for a variety of teachers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, we wouldn't have to have a dedicated, we don't have, we don't have three classrooms that would be dedicated to this, to the grade six Spanish, but that wouldn't be an issue. Okay. We have it happening this year with a point four Spanish teacher who's using somebody else's classroom when she's on prep. So. So the other question, um, it's kind of a question and a comment. Um, so my experience with the preschool in, with, it, with, a, with one of the private preschools in our town is that they do this FLUS model already um, and do it from the infant room on up um, through their classrooms. And so with the fingers crossed that this building is going to get approved on Monday and we'll have the pre-K in one of our buildings, will that then apply for that classroom or are we still only planning from K through um, one or is that just not a consideration at this point? I think when we uh, looked at this, we looked at a more of a traditional structure and we didn't necessarily look at preschool per se. Um, I think if this is successful, there's no reason why we couldn't look to try to move it into uh, preschool, but uh, we did not have that as one of our charges going in. It was from grades K on up, so. And I mean, I guess what I would just put out there is yeah. that it may be interesting to um, not necessarily survey formally, but talk to some of the preschools in the area to see if they are utilizing this model as well, because you may have students coming in at the kindergarten level that have already had some experience with it. Um, and unfortunately, when they come in with that experience, if you don't flex that muscle, it goes away very quickly, as I know from my <laughs> limited Spanish skills at this point in time. Um, but I, I just would encourage us to look at that, because I think that might also be a plus for moving it forward at those younger grades. Sure. Um, I'll make note of that. And then, yeah, I guess it, Kelly already asked the question. I just wonder for the, the teacher's perspective um, if they've been, if uh, the elementary school teachers and their thoughts on using a program like this where they certainly are going to need to take on um, a lot of the integration of this with their own current classroom teaching practices. So. And I w yeah, thank you for that comment. I would say that is our next step. I mean, this was a preliminary study. We want to look at what does the research say. We want to look at what our community needs are and come up with, like, well, well how, how would this work here? How would we envision this? And we wanted it not to be too complicated. We wanted to just give you the facts. And, uh, and, and so that's what we've done. But absolutely the next step would be if, if, in fact, it's something we're moving forward with. It's, well, we want it to be successful. We need to make sure that everybody's on board and how we're going to make this work with the teachers, not just in terms of a program itself. So at this level, we're just looking at programs. So thank you. Um, when kids get to the high school and they're taking, they've taken Spanish since seventh grade. Um, when are they taking the AP Spanish class? Like, when is the natural end to their Spanish language so program? Senior year is the most likely year for them to do that. So they're still, so Mandarin, <coughs> those students are going to get four years and they generally keep going through their senior year. And then Spanish, those students are going for the, the full six years and what's being offered. So no one's going, I guess what I thought might be happening is someone takes four and then they pick up French one and French two. We do have some students actually that do pick up a second language. We do, we probably have 10, 12 students that may be studying Chinese and something else at, at the current time. I know last year I had a student who was taking French and Spanish AP at the same time. So it does happen. 
Um, but but it, yeah, you, you would have to look for when it would open, you're correct, in the program. So is our expectation if we move it to sixth grade that still we're just adding a, a younger year, but we're not like increasing the proficiency on the, I shouldn't say proficiency, we're not increasing the level that they can get to on the other end. Does that no, make sense? No, you're just assuring that when they do get to that <coughs> level, they're going to do better than they're doing now because okay. they, they will have had an, an, an extra year of time. So. And so can we um, like quantify that need? Is there is there an actual need for Spanish students at, at that are seniors who are who've done the six years now? Do we see a need? Like, are they not as proficient as I don't know a college would ex expect, or that they themselves would expect at the end of? Does that make sense? Okay, let me let me think about this. Um, are you are you saying are you asking if our Spanish students feel as though another an extra year would would increase their proficiency or no so you're telling me it will increase yes, their proficiency will, yes, right I'm just wondering what that means from like a quantifiable academic sense okay, right so, so is everyone maybe, getting maybe threes you thought about it this way mm -hmm. um, if you get a four or a five on that AP exam usually that equates to two years of college credit and so that means that you can enter college at the first the first class junior year so that's getting two years of credit for taking an AP class and, and sticking with your Spanish for that amount of time. The chances of that happening are greater, obviously, if you have yet another year underneath as opposed to just the um, seventh through twelfth grade. Okay, so, so using that as the marker, what percentage of our students are getting their fourth and fifth and getting those two years of credits now? Okay, so um, last year I think we had Probably um, it was somewhere around seven or eight kids with eights and seven or with five. We had probably seven or eight kids with fours. We had probably four kids with three and maybe one kid with a two, one student with a two. Um, so it's usually the five that's going to, to in, in most schools, state schools especially, going to get you those two, those two years of credit, which means that you start virtually with a minor in Spanish. So um, the other thing that adding sixth grade does, though, too, is encourage more students to take Spanish, I think. It starts it earlier. It starts their enthusiasm for the program earlier, and their chances of, of following it all the way through are greater as well. I think there are a lot of benefits other and, than just the... And, Ellen, if I could add to that, I think, to me, uh, the largest benefit that I'm hoping we would read from it is if I back up, Meredith, I mean, uh, Marilyn said seven or eight, seven or eight, and four. So 16 and four, 20. That's 20 kids in an AP. I want to see more than that. I want to see 40 kids in an AP. I want to see 60 kids in there. So that's what I'm hoping that this does by having an extra year. <coughs> it gives kids that they feel much more comfortable. They want to take more Spanish, and, and it generates that enthusiasm and, get enthusiasm and gives them another year to get sort of ramp it up before we get to the high school. And they're taking a lot of other subjects that sort of pull, out, pull them. So that's, that's, I think, what my ultimate goal would be, not necessarily within a specific class. Are we going to see a higher percentage of fives? I want to see more kids taking AP. So that, that's, I think, where I come from on that. And if another I could thing I would in. like to see is more kids taking Spanish five. So they don't want to take AP. Maybe they're taking AP math, AP science, but, they, but they're dropping at the end of their junior year. You know, I would like to see them continue to take Spanish fives. And again, the earlier kids start, the more likely they are to stay in a program. So this this might not be the time to ask for a recommendation from you guys through this study. So you can you can it's shut not, shut yeah, me down. It's but not it's not the right. Thing. I uh, I am curious where where we'd end up if it was an either or. So if it was a sixth grade, your three FTEs, or start a language in in your three FTEs that, we're, that we can add to the budget are going to do the, the elementary. And so have we looked really hard at what, if it isn't either, or what the recommendation is going to be? So the impact of adding it at sixth grade versus the impact of adding it in elementary. Okay. And yeah, we haven't done that yet, but I'd also want to just to qualify here. That wasn't the charge of this group. This group was come to us with what makes sense for us, Hopkinton, what makes sense for us in terms of a quality of world language program. 
And what would that look like in the middle school? And what would that look like in the elementary? So we haven't put any qualifiers in, in terms of, but, you know, we need mm -hmm. to filter this now. So either or and all that. So yeah. that wasn't what this group was charged with, and I would not want to put them on the spot here yep. with that. I think that's going to come out as part of our budget discussions. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, and then I guess the only other question I have, and maybe I asked this last year, is what are the online offerings in foreign language and are we taking advantage of, of those to the fullest and is, is there any way to, I, I don't, to sort of move, move you, the budget Marilyn. impact okay. from, from, you know, uh, the high school to being able to move some of those people to the middle school or down because sure. we can actually do online in high school. Sure. Okay. The, um, the experience that I've had with the online, um, first of all, I have um, a really good acquaintance who used the Chinese Middlebury um, program in their school, and it was a disaster. Okay, so, I, this, so that's one thing that I do know. It, it just didn't go well at all. Um, I also wrote the AP Spanish course for VHS, and I would say that um, taking a language online is just a very difficult thing to do. You don't have the interaction that you get from actually talking to someone in a conversation, having a real conversation with someone, having to record every conversation that you want to have. Worse than that, having to type out every discussion that you want to have in a discussion group as opposed to actually being able to talk to someone is not really the best way to learn a language. Mm -hmm. That's my Marilyn and I sat, uh, maybe it was last winter, and we looked at uh, the Middlebury online program because uh, one of the things that I saw as a benefit to that was, uh, boy, you can take Italian, you can do this. There was a bigger variety of things. And then after we discussed some of the pluses and minuses, I went back and did some of the math on it, and it equates to about what it would cost to get a, uh, a quality teacher, not an entry-level teacher, but a teacher that's got a few years of, of experience behind them. And so that's what it would kind of equate to if we had a class size roughly to what a teacher would be taking on in terms of student load. So I didn't see it as a cost savings at all. I saw it as sort of a wash. And at that point, it didn't make a lot of sense for us. Mr. Keller, could you talk to us just a little bit? Because in the middle school in the past, we have taken some students. And it wasn't in, in world language, but they have had some online experiences. And could you talk to us a little bit about what we've learned from that experience? Yeah, so we, ha we haven't had tremendous success with that. And we had, we've had some students take uh, a math, and actually we did have a student take a French, um, uh, French program. French and Spanish. French and Spanish. Um, and, and so we've had limited success with that. Um, I think uh, particularly to Marilyn's point earlier, um, the, um, the opportunity to engage in the language on a regular basis is, is an important component. And what we found, I think, is that the students were, were finding success understanding learning about the culture but not so much uh, the, the ultimately the goal of, of the language program which is to be able to to uh, speak and, and hear and understand yeah. right okay thanks thank you Ellen. um yes so first of all thank you very much this is really interesting and i and um, answers a lot of questions that i've asked over the years i think so i really um i'm I'm very pleased to see all three languages coming in at the middle school. I know that's challenging as far as staffing and space, but I think in terms of the long-term health of all three programs at the high school, it's really critical um, to do it that way. I, I wasn't sure for the sixth grade, would, it be, would they be starting out selecting French or Spanish, or would they be having exposure to both and then making that selection to a single language in seventh grade? Um, I don't know if that's something... It, it's not something that we've actually discussed, but I think with most programs what happens is that you make that selection at the sixth grade level. You, you will have had Spanish for five years, and then you decide which language you're going to go, go with for middle school. And then sometimes you have an opportunity even to change in high school. Now, you take Spanish from, from K through five and say you decide to want to, you want to take French. It doesn't mean that your K to five Spanish was a waste of time. Right. As a matter of fact, that it's probably going to make you a better French student than you would have been had you not had Spanish. So, or Mandarin for that that case, because you're learning to learn a foreign language. So, um, I, I think it opens up a lot of possibilities. Well, I think in the long term scenario where we have a ki you know children are entering this program in in kindergarten, 
you know, I think that's a really valid point. I'm just thinking as we're transitioning towards that, and you're starting now in the middle school. Um, I, I was just, I was really pleasantly surprised to hear what you were saying about more kids taking French, because I know, you know, in the time that my kids have been there, there ha it has dipped quite a bit, and so I'm very happy to hear that it's going back up. And I'm just thinking as far as encouraging that growth, if there's a way for exposure in the sixth grade to both, um, so that before, you know, that they make that choice. I just would hate to see it go back down again in French. That's, I guess that's the only consideration that I'm raising as you're thinking of how to structure it. Um, well, my, my um, comment on that, it kind of goes to Ellen's point earlier. So the, um, my experience and the little uh, knowledge that I have as a former humanities director <laughs> is that, <laughs> that card every once in a while, um, <laughs> is that um, when you're doing something like that, when you're dividing up a year, you're, you're not gaining the benefits of that full year of study. And so That's true. It's, it's reducing the overall proficiency that that child will have at, at the end of the experience. Oh, I think that's absolutely true. I just, uh, I just I am raising it as a consideration because I know a lot of people are duly certified in French and Spanish, right. and um, it, they're yeah, already getting more than what they would have. Yeah, but I think what ends up happening is that you have sixth graders looking at teachers and saying, this is a really fun teacher. This one's maybe not so fun, you know. I'll go with the fun teacher. It's, I don't care if she teaches Russian, <laughs> <laughs> which is fine, you know, because I think whatever language you choose, um, you should learn another language, whatever language that is. But um, exploratory languages, as Alan said, you don't get the payback for those. That's a whole year that you just wasted that you could have done 180 hours of on a particular language getting that much further. Yeah, so that's what the research shows on that, mm -hmm. if that helps. But I understand because yeah, it, it's a really I difficult guess, thing. Yeah, I mean, at the, bo at the bottom of it, my point is how do we continue to support French, really, and not... Right. Not th yeah, yeah. right to how to give the kids some exposure. So I, I, I could, obviously not my place to micromanage how that happens, but I would hate to see it go back down. Um, and then I I don't know if you're um, considering doing all of this at once, or you would recommend a more staggered approach, or that's a conversation that is really just a budget-driven conversation that we will have later or I mean obviously we wouldn't put the elementary before the middle school right. in case you never got there but I don't um, you're not asking them to make that recommendation we're going to make that choice I can see you shaking your head she is that's fine and I and I also just then I'll just end by saying I really like this model that you've talked about in the elementary school because I think when we've had the conversations before it was you know how do we find minutes in an in already very busy week and take some away from this and some away from that and it was a more isolated thing which also means that it's not really a rich um, or valuable experience because it's it's so limited in what you're able to offer the kids so I think that this approach blending it with what they're already learning it sort of feels like a, a a halfway or modified um, immersion program really um, it is a perfect um, blend of, of what the needs are so I, I think the model sounds great to me and um, so really I thank you for for that work I, I do other districts do this with it, some plus is right now the most popular program um, Immersion obviously is, is better, but immersion requires a drastic overhaul of what of existing um, elementary school programs. So a lot of people don't go there, or if they go to immersion, it's only for a limited people that might be in a lottery, so not everybody gets to take advantage of it. So we like the PLUS model. Um, the, you know, there are exploratory models, but the drawback to exploratory is, just as Ellen was saying, is that's time that you didn't spend on one language that you could have gone somewhere up the proficiency ladder that you didn't get to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all trade-offs. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you. Did you have anything? Yes, my question. You did? Yeah. All right, I, then I have one more. You got so. one more. <laughs> you go right ahead. We're, we're now back on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's more of a, it, it's definitely related to budget. and. Yes. It's certainly opposite of what Jean was just saying, yes. but um, in terms of preserving French. But my question is, is that based on utility of languages, and if there was choices to be made, budgetary concerns, is is there any 
and you don't, you're not going to have the answer to this now. It's more just sure. something to keep in mind. Yep. But the cost-benefit analysis of focusing one language through secondary, through middle school, and then having the choices only be in high school, does that at all help or hinder the budgetary concerns? Where My thought process is if you had Spanish as a focus and then where those other languages that, I mean, I, I think Mandarin and Spanish are probably the two most useful languages right now in the world. But, and not to say that French can't be used places, but it's just not as widely spoken as those two languages are. And so if, if we were looking at it strictly from a utility standpoint and what you were trying to arm your students with for going out in the workforce, that would be how I'd be looking at it. And so I don't know if there's any, um, budgetary savings and, and it lo working that way. Um, so that's just, it's it's just putting it out there as a yeah. thought, but I, it, and I know nothing about that. Yeah. Um, so I just. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you raising, uh, you know, looking out and, and is there a way that we could make this work but uh, not have a full expenditure that we've talked about tonight. I think that's our next step. I really do. That wasn't, as I said earlier, that wasn't what we charged everyone here with. Tonight was coming forward with what makes sense for us in terms of a, a program that would work and what does the community want to see, and we, we married those things together, and that was presented. But absolutely, that's our next step. So I just gave you a preview of questions to come. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, Thank for you. coming Thank tonight and in, in the work you put into the presentation. Gracias. <laughs> Gra <laughs> 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 okay, moving on to item D, right? Is that where we are? Yep. Everyone yes, agrees. it is. <laughs> joint capital, I saw you making check marks. <laughs> <laughs> the joint capital project with the town in the amount of $636 for consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for payment of a joint capital project as appropriated in reference to Article 23. You have a recommended motion before you. Do you have any comments or questions on the motion? Okay, so I'd seek a motion to move to approve the payment of $636 to the vendors indicated on the request for payment joint capital form. So moved. Seconded. Motion by Mr. Graziano, second by Ms. Nickerson. All those in favor? Yes. Yes. Unanimous and so carried. Next we have a capital project school department article, warrant number 16-020 in the amount of $31,585.98. Um, for consideration is the request and recommendation of the superintendent for payment of the invoices for a capital project as appropriated in Article 14. Does anyone have any questions or comments to the motion before them? Okay, so I'd seek a motion to move to approve the payment of warrant number 16-020 in the amount of $31,580. $5.98 to the vendor as outlined in the warrant. So moved. <laughs> second. Motion by Ms. Nickerson, second by Mr. Graziano. All those in favor? Yes. 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 And so carries. We have no old business. And um, you know what? We missed our second public comment. It should be, I mean, it's not on the agenda, but there's no one here. So we'll move on. <laughs> it was by consensus. Um, Mr. Boyle, are you going to read those today? Yes, I am. Okay. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve the operating budget and other funds warrant number 16-019 in the amount of $421,719.67. The superintendent recommends the school committee vote to approve $3,975 from the Sky the Limit fundraiser to be placed in the middle school gift account as indicated in the agenda materials. I can't. <laughs> so <moved. Shut> off <laughs> easy. Yeah. Second. Motion by Ms. Birchman, second by Ms. Knight. All those in favor? Yes. 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 It's unanimous and so carries. And our next meeting is Thursday, November 19th at 7 p.m. here in the Middle School Library and it's regular meeting. And I'd seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Nickerson, second by Ms. Birchman. All those in favor? Yes. 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 It's unanimous and so